This video is on the topic of predation and it's looking at predator-prey relationships which features in the ecology section of your course. So in ecology you need to know your definitions really well and you must check the marking schemes for these but you could define predation as when an organism catches, kills and eats another organism and they are of different species so put that in brackets. The organism that does the catching, killing and eating is the predator and that which gets eaten is known as the prey. So when we consider predator and prey relationships, we're usually thinking of organisms such as something scary like a fox eating a rabbit or some type of lion eating as another animal. But what we forget sometimes is that herbivores, those animals that eat only plant material, they are actually predators and the plant material, the producers are the prey. So let's look at the adaptations of predators and there are both physical and behavioural ones. So bats are really excellent predators and they are very good at catching their prey which are these moths and they do this by echolocation. The bat emits a sound, the sound hits off the moth, returns to the mat and this is how the bat can figure out where that moth is and go and catch it. And this is an example of a physical adaptation. You don't see bats during the day because they are nocturnal, they only hunt at night and so this is a behavioural adaptation. Some predators have excellent eyesight, they also have an excellent sense of smell to detect prey and the ability to run very quickly. Many predators use venom or stings to catch and kill their prey. For example, snakes will inject venom into their prey by biting them with these sharp fangs. Ladybirds have another type of physical adaptation. They have very strong jaws and this helps them greatly to catch and kill their prey, aphids. Many hunting techniques developed by predators are an example of behavioural adaptations. For example, many will just wait and sit and buy their time until it's a good chance to get their prey. Others will stalk their prey and others will hunt in packs or groups. What about the adaptations of prey? How do prey avoid being captured and killed? Well, some prey have great adaptations, both behavioural and physical. So the rabbit here has excellent hearing, so that's a physical adaptation and he will know very quickly if there's a fox, a predator around and take evasive action. The action he takes is behavioural, he'll hide away in his burrow. Another physical adaptation of prey and how they avoid being caught is they emit warning calls or they make a lot of noise. Some organisms have distinctive colouring, for example bright red is usually a warning to predators don't eat me, I taste bitter. And many other organisms, although they don't have that bitter taste, they've learned to mimic or they've evolved to mimic the colours of those other organisms. And let's not forget about plants because plants have means or ways of avoiding being eaten by their predators, so many have thorns for example. Often on your exam when you do encounter predation it's usually in the form of a graph question and it has one of these predator prey graphs or it's asking you to draw one and these graphs are showing the dynamics of the predator prey relationship so it's basically showing how the prey is usually high and then eventually the predator numbers will increase. Eventually the prey numbers will decline. This is usually in response to all those predators moving in, possibly because they're eating all those prey, that's why the numbers go down, but eventually so too will the number of predators. They'll either die because there's no food to eat or mostly they'll migrate and move away looking for new food. So predation is one way in which population numbers are controlled. So in this predator prey graph you can see that the red is the prey and the blue dotted line is the predator. You can see when prey numbers are at their highest it's because those predator numbers are not matching them. They're not at their highest and this is what allows for those prey numbers to be at their maximum. However eventually more predators their numbers increase. They move into the area in response to all that food and they start to feed and to kill the prey. This follows then that prey numbers will decline and often what follows after that is the predator numbers will also decline. The prey does not go extinct because it has means of avoiding extinction. It can conceal itself and possibly because there are few predators those left may have reduced in numbers due to migration or they might have starved but in response to those low predator numbers the prey can increase in numbers again. You could be asked to draw your own predator prey graph so please make sure that you have at least two peaks, two for your predators and two for your prey. 
Make sure that your axes are labelled correctly. Y axis should be population number and X axis should be time. And also ensure that your peaks and your troughs for your predators and your prey are not in sync. So remember that predation is one way in which population numbers are controlled and also remember that predation is one way in which different species interact. Also remember that predators and prey both have their own physical and behavioural adaptations that make them better suited or better adapted for their own survival. And bear in mind that the predator-prey graphs are very important and can be tricky. So the best of luck with all of the revision. Remember, this video does not replace any textbook ever. And the only way to really do well is to do past papers, but you must check your answers with the official marking scheme. And remember, my graphs in this presentation are very rough. You'll get better ones in your books and in the papers. These videos are not made for monetary gain and they are not intended for commercial use. Best of luck with all that revision. And my pictures were made with Keynote.